वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स टू कंप्यूटर स्टडीज स्टैंडर्ड नाइन इंग्लिश मीडियम टुडे थ्रू दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू चैप्टर नंबर फोर दिस इज पार्ट वन ऑफ द वीडियो द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज मेमोरी स्टोरेज डिवाइस एंड डेटा रिप्रेजेंटेशन so the name of the chapter is memory storage device and data representation from which first topic which i have to teach you is memory now see we human beings are able to memorize the things and whenever needed we are able to retrieve that data for example if you have read the chapters for number of times then at the time of exams you can be you can retrieve that data whatever you have memorized and you can answer the exams same way in the computer also there is a need of memorizing the data the part of the computer where the things could be memorized or saved that part is known as memory now human beings memory cannot be measured in any units we cannot say that his memory is of these many gbs while that one's memory is very low it is of only this that many mb no we cannot measure while computer memory can be measured in the units called bytes kilobytes megabytes gigabytes and terabyte so what is this uh, uh, bytes and bits and all those things computer stores everything in the form of zeros and ones in the primary school also you may have been taught this thing that computer stores everything in the form of binary language so what is that binary language and how much is the size of a bit or byte or kilobyte that i will explain you on the blackboard now before i start the explanation i would like to give the introduction of my channel also that this channel is a non commercial channel and it is specially designed to teach the students of standard 9th and 10th and especially i am teaching 10th standard student that is the students who are in ssc and i am preparing them for the ssc board exams computer subject and i am teaching all the practicals also and through this channel i am teaching all the chapters of standard 9th and standard 10th so all those who are new on this channel may subscribe the channel if they haven't subscribed the channel yet one byte is equal to 8 bits these bits could be either 0 or 1 so the combination of this 8 digits forms one byte now one now after byte the next unit which comes is kilobyte now how to calculate kilobyte one kb is equal to 1024 bytes now you may be thinking that why it is uh, not 1000 and why it is 1024 it is a upward figure now you know that computer understands binary language so the base is 2 0 or 1 2 right so 2 raised to 10 2 raised to 10 forms 1024 now after that comes megabyte 1 mb is equal to 1024 kb after mb the next bigger unit is gb one gb is equal to 1024 mb after that the next unit is terabyte tb we call it tb
so here i have displayed all this uh, things in the tabular form you can pause the video over here and try to remember this information as we discussed just now there are two types of memories primary memory and secondary memory now in memory there are two types of memories that is primary memory and secondary memory from which first i would like to explain you the concept of primary memory now primary memory is known as the main memory it is that much main part of the computer that without that memory your computer will not even start so how is that memory how does it looks i will also show you the photograph of that thing it is ram okay there are two types of primary memory ram and rom both the things i will explain you nicely okay so from that first thing is ram now why is it known as main memory why the computer cannot start without it that i will explain you now when the computer starts it needs to load the operating system into the memory so it needs temporary space to load itself in the memory so who provides the temporary space then ram provides the temporary space so ram is primary memory and that is why ram is main memory now rom i will explain you when i come to that topic just now i will continue with ram only fine now how is this memory this memory is made up of small small cells now this cells you can compare it with your square line book of mathematics now in your mathematics book there are small small squares in the in each page am i right so same way your ram is also made up of so many cells now how many cells that i will tell you for example if you have got 4 gb ram then 4 gb ram means how many bits uh, 1024 multiply by 4 multiply by 1024 multiply by 1024 multiply by 1024 multiply by 8 that many cells are there in 4 gb ram okay so that big is your ram now why is it known as random access memory the answer to that is here the data is stored randomly see for example this much is your ram and if you open a file then some part will be stored here if you open another file it will be stored here another part here it will not be stored in a sequence like this way and that is why the uh, saving is done randomly anywhere and that is why it is known as random access memory hope this concept is clear now okay now i will explain you how to answer the mcqs asked from this part just now i explained you what is primary memory or main memory so i hope the concept is clear now here i have noted down some sentences from where mcqs could be formed the word marked in red and bold will be the answer of that mcq so i am reading out and explaining you this things first thing primary memory is important part of a computer in which data is stored for quick access remember for quick access primary memory is made up of large number of cells that also i explained you just now and each cell contains a piece of data each cell is identified by a number called cell address whenever we want to retrieve the data the cell address is used this all things i explained you just now primary memory is organized in such a way that minimum time is required to store and retrieve the data here any location in the memory is randomly chosen to store the data hence it is known as random access memory 
another kind of primary memory is read only memory rom this i had not explained because this topic is coming in detail in the next video before i continue with the explanation of the random access memory there is a small topic describing the four different types of uh, storage method in your textbook among them the first one is ram that is random access memory second one is sequential access method third one is first in first out method in short it is known as fifo method and next one is last in first out that is lifo method so i will explain you these all things now in sequential access data is stored serially or sequentially in a long string it is just like an audio tape if you want to hear the third song first two songs must be fast forwarded now when i'm speaking this thing you may be feeling awkward that what is this uh, what is sir explaining just now because you have not seen the audio cassette right now in olden days this thing audio cassette was used to play the songs now here you can see that there are two reels in one reel you can see that black color magnetic tape is filled then the magnetic tape is coming out and then it is going to the other side reel and in that side also little bit part is filled now on this magnetic tape the songs were written so whenever we want to play the song it will start from the first then we will have to fast forward if you want to go to the third song that means all the data was stored in a sequence here just now whatever i explained you by showing you the audio cassette is typed here so i will read it at a high speed in sequential access data is stored serially or sequentially in a long string when you want to access some part of the string you have to pass through the previous part of the string just like an audio tape if you want to hear the third song first two songs must be fast forwarded the next method is first in first out in short it is known as fifo that is fifo it could be asked in the mcq also now see whatever things could be asked in the mcqs i have highlighted it using bold and red color all over the video so that every time i don't need to tell you the same thing now fifo is just like a queue where first entry will be served first and the last entry will be entertained at last here you can see a queue of people standing now who is standing first will get the first chance on the counter and then the next and so on so this type of storage method is known as fifo opposite to it is the, the method called last in first out in short it is known as lifo now to explain you lifo method we can take the example of a pile of papers or bunch of papers now here you can see if you arrange the papers in a bunch then the paper which you keep on the top that is the paper which you keep at the last when you pick up the paper that paper will come out first so this type of storage method is known as lifo method now we come to the main topic that is ram now before explaining you anything about ram i am showing you the photograph of the ram so you get the exact idea of what i am talking because i know most of the teachers have taught in the school that ram is random access memory but you don't know how it physically looks this is the image of a motherboard ram is fixed on the motherboard here you can see the slots where ram could be fixed the first characteristic of ram is it is a volatile memory what is the meaning of volatile memory volatile memory means temporary memory remember this word temporary memory the content written in ram requires continuous power supply to retain it into the memory now this i would like to explain you with an example it is a must that you should know what it is actually for example if you are preparing a 
drawing using paint program you have not yet saved the file then also you are able to draw the picture so temporarily it is stored somewhere am i right you have not yet saved in the hard disk but temporarily it is stored somewhere now if the power supply goes off what will happen the paint the picture which you had prepared using paint program will go away so temporarily where it was stored till the power supply was on it was stored in the ram remember this thing on modern days computers the term ram or it is also called just memory either ram or you can also call it memory it is used as a synonym of primary storage device or main storage device simply you can call ram or memory this concept is 110% totally new for you that there are two types of ram static ram and dynamic ram so i will explain you both of them and also i will explain you the difference between both of them now first of all as the name suggests dynamic means you will think that it is something dynamic <laughs> but it is totally opposite to that dynamic is actually a little bit uh, dull than static ram now first thing is we all use dynamic ram in our computer we call it ddr3 ram or ddr4 ram right while static ram is needed for powerful computers another thing dynamic ram needs to be refreshed thousands of time per second that is why it is little bit slow in speed while static ram is static it doesn't needs to be refreshed at all it goes on continuously then dynamic ram we get a good speed while in static ram we get a super fast speed dynamic ram is affordable cost wise that is it is available at reasonable cost while static ram is very expensive and one common characteristic of both the ram is both are volatile that is both are temporary memory so dear students here we complete the first part of chapter number 4 we meet in the next video again if you like the video please hit the like button thank you goodbye